During the 2023 BlizzCon event, a well-respected and beloved icon made a reappearance. Going out on stage after a long absence, Chris Metzen presented us with the future of World of Warcraft, a trilogy of expansions that looks to give direction and closure to the current story arc, starting with The War Within, poised to launch this year. As a teenager, I used to play World of Warcraft every day, raking in thousands of hours across multiple expansions. But as anything, times change, and eventually I decided to take a break. After more than six years away from the world of Azeroth, this seemed like the perfect time to come back and see for myself what the team at Blizzard has to offer. For starters, we now have several flavors to choose from. World of Warcraft Dragonflight, the latest expansion and the main course for any new player. Classic World of Warcraft, a return to the initial release that started it all. Classic Hardcore, a spin on the hardcore game mode for those seeking a different kind of challenge. Classic Season of Discovery, or Classic Plus as some would like to call it. A reimagining of the old world with a few twists and turns to spice things up. And lastly, a Greatest Hits version, going through the original expansions, starting out with The Burning Crusade and continuing through Wrath of the Lich King, as well as the soon-to-be-released Cataclysm expansion and possibly beyond. All of these experiences can be enjoyed under a single subscription, so there is no reason not to check them out to see what matches your personal tastes. In this video, however, I want to focus on the retail version of the game, namely the Dragonflight expansion, and explore this setting in preparation for the War Within. For a little bit of context, I used to play World of Warcraft between 2005 and 2018. During this time, I spent well over 12,000 hours doing everything there is to do in the world of Azeroth, from leveling alts and professions, PvPing, raiding, and anything in between. I competed in Realm First raid races, acquired many rare titles, achievements, and mounts, and have met a lot of very experienced and fun people over the years. That said, much of this matters little today, as the game is very different from back then. Many systems have come and gone, new game modes have been added, and the feel of the game and its community is overwhelmingly different. I had hoped that my experience with the game would serve me well coming back, alas, it did not. In this video, I want to outline the perspective of both a new player and a returning one. I say a new player too, because this time I started over on a new account in a new region. All of the benefits acquired over the years such as mounts, heirlooms, gold and more were gone, with nothing but my old memories there to guide me. I knew from when I stopped playing that the experience would be different, as there were already hints of changing times back then. Even so, I was not prepared for what was to come. There are multiple issues and concerns that the player base has raised over the past year, and I won't be able to touch on all of them. Instead, I will focus on the meta issues or overarching patterns that I think will negatively impact World of Warcraft going into the World Soul Saga, or just the game in general. So without further ado, let's jump right in. The main topics I want to touch on today are add-ons, distractions, item levels, and artificial time sinks. As a returning player, I knew immediately that I would have to look into add-ons again. I was not looking forward to this, and boy was this process daunting. Over the course of several days, I had to go back and forth looking for add-ons, whether out of necessity, pressure from other players, convenience, or simply to keep these up to date, with some add-ons seemingly requiring weekly maintenance. Currently, the base experience without any add-ons is... Uh, not great. While it is true that in many respects the base game experience has seen improvements over the years, the number of add-ons has also increased and the community perception surrounding these has morphed as well. To add a wrinkle in this equation, it is clear from the general experience that the add-ons are often in conflict with the design of the game, making it particularly frustrating when I had to install an add-on because the community at large has been trained to simply accept these without questioning their existence or use. I could point to community-driven add-ons, such as Radar IO and Gear Score as major offenders, but to be honest, these are simply symptoms of a larger issue. In other cases, however, it feels like the game is specifically designed with add-ons in mind, making the experience in many ways worse by choosing to opt out of them. This is apparent with add-ons such as deadly boss mods and weak auras, 
which dominate the discourse around balance, fight design, difficulty, and mental stacking. I would personally love to sit here and say that add-ons need to go, but before that can become a relevant topic of conversation, many things would have to change first. Given the prevalence of add-on culture in World of Warcraft, I do not expect these to be completely banned. That said, I do wish their importance was decreased and the base experience without their use was better. If the main and optimal way to play a game is to install a third-party application and load it with a bunch of little doohickeys before you can even get started, that to me says there is a serious and foundational problem with the game itself. We will set this topic aside for now, but sooner or later we will have to revisit this. My next pet peeve, as they say, is item levels. This is a concept that has always existed in the game at a design level, but was only really understood by the community around the time of the Wrath of the Lich King expansion. The concept is simple. Each item has an item level, which determines the budget of that item. A higher item level means the item has a higher stat allocation. There are multiple factors and elements to this, some of which are harder to quantify, such as trinkets and special effects, However, these are not relevant to the conversation at the moment. My focus here is specifically around item level inflation in Dragonflight, which has reached concerning and almost comical levels. Let's start by setting the groundwork and context of the issue. In Wrath of the Lich King, which is currently available for players on the classic servers, the starting item level you can be expected to have when you reach the max level of 80 is 187. By the end of the expansion, the highest item level you would be able to get is 284. That is 97 item levels over the course of an expansion, from just hitting the level cap to the hardest content available. For comparison, in Dragonflight, the highest item level you can realistically have on an item when you reach max level is 343, with the current maximum being 489. Note, however, that Dragonflight has not yet ended, and we may yet see this number go higher. To put this in perspective, Dragonflight's current level range for Endgame alone is nearly the same as the entirety of classic World of Warcraft and the Burning Crusade combined. Do you happen to know which other expansion had a similar bloat? The answer is Mists of Pandaria. Do you know what else these two expansions have in common? Gear upgrades! That's right folks, Mists of Pandaria is the first expansion that introduced the ability for the player to spend currency to upgrade item level on your gear. These two factors combined led to a stat squish in the very next expansion, Warlords of Draenor. This only lasted for two expansions until Battle for Azeroth, when another stat squish, coupled with an item level squish, took place, followed by another one in the very next expansion, Shadowlands, that also included a level squish. This needs to stop. It is unsustainable and will only create more problems going into the Dragon Soul Saga. With this pacing, we will need a stat or item level squish every expansion. I hope I'm not the only one when I say this, but having a squish every expansion is a terrible feeling for character and power progression. At that point, this type of balance becomes almost indistinguishable from borrowed power systems. My third complaint pertains to distractions as I call them. You know those small things that are supposed to feel like an event when they happen, but really all they do is break the flow of what you're doing because you kinda sorta have to stop what you're doing in order to get it now while you still can, but somehow it also doesn't really matter. Imagine you're a new player. You start going through the quests and you see a rare monster. What an amazing discovery! You go to take care of it and in return you are awarded with a toy or item. But just as you're about to return back to your quest, you see another rare mob, then a chest, then another. Next, an interactive item, then another rare spawn, on and on and on it goes. Next thing you know, two hours have passed and all you've done is complete three quests, while running circles around the mountain, trying to figure out where or what that star on your map is. 
If you decided to pick a gathering profession, you now have another thing on top to distract you. Remember when I mentioned we'll be getting back to add-ons sooner or later? Well, this is the sooner rather than later part. See, back in ye old wow, back in 2000 and something, we used to have add-ons like Rare Scanner and TomTom, which would help us find and keep track of those rare mobs that everyone was fighting over. These add-ons would show the location of these rare encounters and give you a sound cue when you spotted something rare, and it felt like a celebration what it did. Wanna see how that looks in Dragonflight? I ended up disabling it eventually, since it just ended up being more of a hindrance. The problem in this case, however, is not the add-on, believe it or not, but the design itself. When there are 30 different rare objects sprawled in every area, all on a short respawn timer and many collectibles even being repeatable instead of one-offs, it gets crazy. This is compounded by the fact that, on their own, most of these events are not worth doing, but in the long term, you kind of set yourself back by not doing them. A good example of this are all the random chests around the world in Dragonflight. One would say you don't really have to do these, they're not really worth it, and I could agree. Yet, here I am sitting on various resources that I need now that I'm max level, which I still don't have enough of. 5 flight stones here, another 10 there, it adds up over time. A reputation item in this satchel, another in the next, and a few days later you realize you have 5 levels worth of experience collected from these minor distractions. If I didn't collect any of these resources beforehand, I would be even more behind than I already am. The amount of things to do is both a blessing and a curse. While I love the idea of always having something to do, I don't personally subscribe to the philosophy of busy work for the sake of it. A wise person once said, World of Warcraft used to be a game that made you want to waste your time. Now it's just a game that wastes your time. While Asmongold could have used more honeyed words, uh, the sentiment is still relevant. The idea of games respecting your time is not new. And while I do believe games should try and include a variety of gameplay loops, both short and long, simple and tedious, that cater to different people and playstyles, there is always a better or worse way to interpret this feedback. Grinding the Sons of Hodor reputation in Wrath of the Lich King, 5 minutes every day for a month, to get the enchantment that you don't really need unless you're an endgame raider? Good. Grinding Loam Niffen or Valdracan Accord Renown for several months so you can unlock the next step of a quest chain or get a useless item upgrade? Bad. Multiply this across even just two characters and it gets worse the more you interact with it. Especially if it's no longer relevant content in the current patch. The last point I wanted to talk about, I already hinted at briefly in the previous sections, and that is item upgrading. To put it very bluntly, this system needs to go. It reduces or outright nullifies the impact and usefulness of all gear outside the current tier. It destroys natural progression and acquisition of gear, it exacerbates the high item level bloat even more, and makes the gearing process unrewarding. Not only that, the amount of resources needed to upgrade the gear from one tier to the next is exceedingly high, and the acquisition rate unnecessarily prohibitive. 
As an example, there are a total of 112 possible upgrade levels you can go through to completely upgrade a set of gear. Over the course of my first two weeks at max level, I have managed to perform 36 upgrades, most of which are low-level upgrades that cost fewer or more common resources. Mind you, I've gotten a lot of flight stones and dreaming crests thrown at me in advance as a result of quests and other one-time only rewards. Now that I've burned through my stockpiled flight stones and I need to rely on grinding to get more, progress has nearly stopped and I still have to go through 69 more upgrades. Assuming no pieces get replaced, which they of course will. Going through 7 upgrades on an item does not feel like progress, and is not rewarding. Rather, it is a punishment. The perception is that the item obtained is incomplete. Furthermore, if they happen to get a new item, that is a higher base item level, they are now required to grind for power that was already previously unlocked. Now before anyone asks, there are ways in which you can keep this type of progression system in the game and allow users to chase improvements that don't directly correlate to main stats item level. My suggestion? Tertiary stats. Imagine a world where instead of 7 item level upgrades, you can roll a tertiary stat on any piece. The resources required would be similar to one or two of the lowest upgrades cost today, and you would be able to re-roll the tertiary stat whenever you want, similar to reforging in Cataclysm. Gem sockets on every piece to maximize stats? How about leech to make your personal sustain better? Or speed to build that ultimate farming set? Maybe you want a full indestructible set, so you never have to repair it again. Go right ahead. Understand rolling tertiary stats on every piece could result in some issues, notably leech or speed, but I'm sure these stats can be capped or weighted accordingly if needed. Even with that said, I highly doubt a socket on every item will be harder to balance than having 20 extra item levels on every gear slot as it currently stands. And there you have it. Four aspects. I wish to see changed or improved going into the World Soul Saga. Do you agree with any of my concerns? Or do you think these are unfounded? What suggestions or solutions would you propose for the issues I highlighted here? Leave your comment below and let's talk about it. Until next time, I'm VTX Shiva, your friendly neighborhood snow leopard, signing out.